Now, yesterday, the dual-listed indigenous energy firm Owendo PLC successfully completed the acquisition of the Nigerian Ajib Oil Company from Italian energy firm ENI. The 783 million US dollar deal was signed earlier in the British capital and marks a significant milestone in Owendo's long-term strategy to expand its upstream operations and strengthen its position in the nation's oil and gas sector. Now, uh, let's uh, talk about this and some other development uh, in that space as well as in Nigeria uh, with the CEO of uh, Finance with Mukhtar, uh, Mr. Mukhtar Mohammed, joins us virtually from Lagos. Uh, Mr. Mohammed, good morning and thank you for your time. A pleasure. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so uh, we, we see this, uh, well, a big step, obviously, and we expect, of course, that this will... We, we've seen O and O in the last few days uh, moving the markets. They've been doing well since, I think, since last week, even though there's a bit of, uh, you know, cherry picking also intermittently. But I wonder what this will do to the oil and gas counter with this uh, major move. Yeah, thank you. I think it's going to be a good move for the oil and gas sector. Finally, that means an indigenous firm want to be a big player. Uh, remember, we don't have so much indigenous firms that are big players in that space. Uh, although Seplat can come in as one, so one though is not coming in with the kind of asset they're acquiring. I think it's a very big um, uh, news, especially for the Nigerian oil and gas sector. And again, but again, I have my own reservation when it comes to acquisition. Uh, some years ago, this was a kind of post we had when Wando also acquired Kokonoko Phillips or at that time, and all of us were saying it's going to be a game changer. And at the end of the day, uh, it became what dragged the company down. But hopefully, I hope they've learned their lesson this time. Due diligence was done, and then this acquisition have taken place. So for the oil and gas sector in Nigeria, I think this is going to be a game changer because, again, we are now seeing two very strong companies listed in the exchange. Uh, one of them is uh, uh, Oando, then, then we have Seplad, and not just the marketing M like what we see in the multinational, like like Total is just the marketing M that we are um, that is listed. So this time around, we are seeing a full host uh, company, upstream, downstream, exploitation, and everything listed in the market. Like what we see in Seplata. So that's what is responsible for the kind of um, movement you are seeing in uh, one dose for some few days now. Mm, well, I'm glad you brought that in the upstream, the downstream now. Um captured because i mean when an average nigerian hears this news what they will ask is so does it bring petrol to the filling station will it remove the queues that we are still seeing uh for over a week now you know how can we expect this to sip in to the daily living and operations of nigerians well we talk about the of the queue in the attic um with from the news we had yesterday uh, Wando itself as a company has exited the retail sector of the company because at, at the point we thought they were all there. But again, after the uh, news from the former vice president and them uh, saying that um, um, Wando has acquired some, but Wando has come out to say, look, they are, they are not in that retail space alone. They are no more there because they have given out that space and have sold it to o N N O E and Helios Group in partnership with NMPC. So, um, the only thing that you will see in that space is uh, when you have a big player, an indigenous player, then it will begin to look at the crude oil supply side. So uh, instead of them taking those crude outside, like to, to, their, to their major companies abroad, uh, like IG oil, or that is uh, any oil that is now taken over by Wando, we could see some of those products comes into our local refinery because it's a local company. So we'll see that synergy between the Owando and maybe Dangote refinery or a Do petrochemical refinery. So that's the good news, and with that, then you have a lot of refined petroleum product to pump into the market. But I think in the retail, and Owando seems to have exit that space. Mm. All right. So I mean, that crude seems to be what we are looking for now in the country. And uh, well, as you said, we hope there will be more collaboration with the IOCs and then the indigenous refiners and then we would see more results but let's look at the wider market now we've seen uh, the ngx really struggle since last week a lot of uh, profit taking um, myself and will have been talking about it and we just say is it because it's summer so people are selling off for holiday um, expenses uh, forthcoming school fees and all of that and and we wonder if this will end when the summer is over 
Hey, Ini, um, Tango, you, you've been in the market for a while. You follow this market. It's always a season whereby you see those um, um, in terms of low activities, things for profit taking, uh, in terms of uh, you talk about school fees, you talk about summer. Uh, but we keep saying about these things, but I don't think they are really so big an impact on the market like that because when you're looking at school fees, you're looking at summer, you're looking at uh, retail investors, and sometimes you're not looking at the high net investors. So definitely that may play a part. But I think what is majorly playing a part in the market now, there's no trigger. When I mean there's no trigger, there's no any sensational news. Uh, you, you see what happened to Wando. Before that news trickled into the market, at the point it was more or less like even Wando is going to go on red. But mainly that news came out, it, it, it sparked it off to a full beat. And so now in the market now, there's no any major news that can drive equity, especially if you look at the key drivers of the uh, equity market. It's normally the financial sector, the half year results have not been approved by the CBL. They are still compiling their right issue. Some of them are still in the market. So investors are looking at all these. And then when you look at the larger economy in itself, there's not so much exciting news about it. Some of the companies that have released their results, that news have not excited the market. So the market need to trigger in terms of the results that will excite the market, especially from the financial state uh, uh, sector. Then that will begin to galvanize the market into the kind of activities that you want to see. I think at this moment, what investors are looking at, they are looking at fundamentals, they are looking at value, and then those that are speculators are looking at profit taking. So these three factors are really playing into the market. For long-term investors, they are looking at value and fundamental. For profit taking, they are looking at price entries and price exit points. So you continue to see those uh, activities. And unfortunately, it seems that the profit taking seems to uh, have more, more intense of uh, activities than those that are the value investor. So definitely those changes will continue to come into the market. Mm. But when the trigger come in terms of those earnings season, you could see a tilt. If, if, like I say, if some of these um, companies that will bring in this report have not been pricing, but as it stands now, it doesn't seem like they have been pricing. Mr. Mama, that was three Eves. So that's a very big if that you have put there. But insurance is one interesting counter. So from being a penny stock to, you know, just catching the fire. And even when we see the parents of financial services, that banking drop, like yesterday they were down almost 1%. We still saw insurance uh, recording some gains. Yeah, like I said, that's, a, that's the speculator's piece. <laughs> the, the price in those pieces are uh, in recession for name insurance, uh, procedure insurance, and uh, um, equity insurance. You see that most of those stocks in that sectors are really, really penny stocks. And so what you're saying, uh, most, most speculators are in that space. You buy for 30 cover, for 5 cover. You make a movement of those 5 cover, you trade in. So there's a lot of volatility in that space now. And that will continue, because, like I said, until we have a trigger that comes into the market and then shift attention from that penny state into the real, real, real um, sector of the market. So definitely what we are looking at now, I told you about investors looking at price entry and price exit. The insurance sector seems, seems to be a bargain space when you are looking at price entry, price exit, profitability in terms of price movement, that in terms of price of those stocks. Again, all these are adding up. To, for you to see the kind of uh, result that you are seeing in that sector. But when you look at in terms of the fundamentals of those stocks in this sector, you and I, we agree that uh, they have not really ticked, but in terms of market activities for profit taking, uh, the, that space is where investors are really playing. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Mukhtar Mohammed, for sharing your time with us this morning.